Um, let's go now to Richard Kemp, who is in Israel. Colonel Richard Kemp, uh, regular here on Outsiders. Uh, the n latest news is that there are drone uh, is a drone attack from Iran. Richard, you've been warning about this sort of thing for months and months. Uh, tell us, Richard, the latest from where you are in Israel. Well, I'm in Jerusalem at the moment, and um, a short while ago, maybe half an hour or so ago, there were a series, a large number of drone intercepts by IDF air defence systems overhead in Jerusalem. Um, some of them very, very loud noises. I don't know whether that indicates that they were ballistic missiles in some cases rather than drones. It's, it's very hard to know. Um, but nevertheless, there were a, a large number of intercepts. I believe that there have been a few direct impacts, at least one direct impact of a drone or a ballistic missile inside Israel. But so far, the information hasn't managed to filter out, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Um, I do understand as well that the Royal, the Royal Air Force and the US Air Force has been up in the sky alongside the Israeli Air Force to defend Israel against this Iranian attack, which is a, a, an extraordinary development and I think one that's extremely welcome. Um, so you, you mentioned the, the RAF is there. Richard, um, what, you know, what are Iran up to? You are, a, you know, a military strategist. Do they think they... Are they testing Iran? Are they... Te uh, Israel? Are they testing Biden? Are they taking advantage of all the uh, pressure on Israel to get out of Gaza? What's the game plan here? Well, I think that to an extent this is a, a, a kind of face-saving manoeuvre on the part of Iran, because, of course, this is a direct retaliation for the 1st of April attack by Israel against Iranian military commanders in Syria who were planning attacks against Israel. And they, they said it was on Syrian sovereign... Uh, beg your pardon, Iranian sovereign territory, because it was close to their embassy. And I guess they felt they had to do something to retaliate. And I'm assuming that that retaliation would not have been intended to cause a, a major escalation in the Middle East. And I think, you know, they would probably calculate that Israel's going to be, as it has been up until now in Gaza, is going to be under pressure from the US to minimise its retaliation against this attack uh, because of the, you know, the, the over, overriding need by the White House to, to de-escalate every situation rather than let it play out in the way that it needs to play out, for example, in this case, for Israel to carry out a very significant retaliation attack against Iran, um, which I think is what Israel should do and I would expect Israel will do uh, as a result of this. Uh, what's going to be the reaction from the other Middle Eastern countries to this escalation? We're hearing reports uh, that Saudi Arabia, Jordan are shooting down drones, missiles. Uh, uh, w w is this going to unite those, those countries behind Israel? I think, in a way, they're already united behind Israel. And this may be the most graphic demonstration of that. But um, Egypt, Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, etc., they all want Israel to deal with Iran, whether it's directly uh, by responding to this attack or whether it is indirectly by destroying Hamas or other Iranian proxies. But they're on the side of Israel on this because they very much fear Iran. Of course, let's not forget, Iran has carried out um, both direct and proxy attacks against Saudi Arabia and the UAE in the past. Um, and the, it's it's a big concern for them. So I think, yeah, they're, they, they're going to be pretty firmly. They may not come out in public and say so, but they're going to be pretty firmly on the side of Israel here. Liz. Colonel, when I heard word of these drones being sent to Israel as well as possible missiles, etc., I probably thought like a lot of viewers thought, which was, well, the Iron Dome will just blow them to shreds. But I now understand there's, there's limited capacity to just how much protection the Iron Dome can provide, uh, depending on how sophisticated, how complex such a missile drone strike would be. Can you elucidate on that at all? Yeah, I mean, my, my understanding, don't quote me on this, um, sure. but my understanding is that this is, <laughs> this is the biggest drone attack in history. 
okay, the history may not go back that long of, of attack drones, but it's a very significant attack. And, have, and I believe that there have also been ballistic missiles in the, uh, in the array. And also, my understanding is that there have been drones fired from Yemen as well. Uh, and also, there have certainly been um, rockets fired from Lebanon into the Golan Heights. So the idea, I think, is is to um, overwhelm Israel's missile defence, mm. uh, and it, it may well be that's happened because we've we've ser we're certainly aware. I'm certainly aware of at least one uh, impact, direct impact. There may be more. I don't know yet, but um, the, the, I think Israel will have been uh, had its defences boosted by U.S. and British air defence support as well. So it may prove that the Iranians, you know, if, if, if there is only one direct impact, if there's no real damage done, this could be also an embarrassment for Iran in, in you know, in, in its sort of much heralded severe retaliation, punishing the Zionist entity. Well, I, we don't know what's, how it's going to unfold yet, but if they don't do some fairly severe damage to Israel, then they, they will show themselves, I think, to be pretty impotent. And that could have an effect on the extent to which they can continue motivating some of their proxies around the region. Rita. Um, I want to play you just a clip from yesterday, President Biden being asked about the uh, possible escalation in the Middle East and action from Iran. Let's have a listen. Mr. President, what is Mr. your President. message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Uh, don't. We've heard that before from the Biden administration. Uh, Iran hasn't listened to that. Just take me through the, the Biden administration's response to this conflict, what they're expected to do now, and whether the weakness and ineptness we've seen from the Biden administration has added to, to the conflict. Well, in addition to the, the, the don't, which was ignored, there's been a lot of intensive diplomatic activity by the US um, in the region to try and prevent Iran from doing this. And despite all that, they still did it. Mm. The US intention is to, uh, is to de-escalate, is to contain Iran rather than strike back at Iran. Um, and, and I think now that Iran has struck, the next phase of President Biden's strategy will be to try and restrain Israel, to try and prevent Israel from... <laughs> effectively ah. strike back. I hope Israel doesn't take any notice of that. But I think that's, that's been Biden's strategy all along. And we've seen it when his own forces have been attacked and American soldiers and support staff killed in those attacks directed from Iran with very little re response. And, and, and that, of course, weakness encourages more and more attacks. Strength Absolutely. deters, weakness provokes. Absolutely. And just quickly, 30 seconds, uh, Richard, when do you expect to see uh, the move into Rafah, uh, hopefully wiping out Hamas in, in Gaza there? Well, it's hard, very hard to say that. And I think this could affect that, affect that situation because if this does include a significant series of attacks from Lebanon, then the likelihood is that Israel will have to launch some form of, of concerted offensive against Hezbollah in Lebanon. And if it does that, that might delay the operation in Rafah because, of course, Israel has a finite number of troops and they would prefer not, unless they have to, to be fighting hard on two fronts. Absolutely. Colonel Richard Kemp, uh, please stay safe there uh, in Israel with your and uh, all our best wishes to you and to your uh, friends who are over there.